by Ariane Cook, who is, um, has been involved in creative writing and directing a creating writing lab for 20 years, and is now involved in developing the Center for the Arts at, uh, the, at the CERN. So I would like to invite Ariane Cook to... Uh, she's there. Oh, well, good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So I'm going to really talk about how to build in arts into a major cultural institution, a very extraordinary cultural institution, but one that I would argue was missing a limb, <laughs> which is the arts, of course. Um, and I would say, just imagine this extraordinary place where you can discover the secrets of clouds, where I can knock on a door and, and say to a top scientist, oh, can you talk to me about unlocking the secrets of clouds? And he says, yes, I will take you away, come to my cloud chamber, see how I'm bringing clouds down to earth. Or this extraordinary place where you can actually see if gravity really, really does exist. And actually, is it really a fundamental force? Also, you can go underground and see one of what has been called one of the eighth wonders of the world, and it really is absolutely extraordinary. And of course, I'm talking about CERN, uh, if you haven't guessed it. And I'm there leading on CERN's most unusual experiment, its most new experiment, and that's really colliding elements even more invisible than particles, and possibly, possibly even more elusive than the Higgs boson. And those elements are human creativity, ingenuity, and imagination. And for those of you who feel in desperate need of an equation, just in case there's some of you, oh, no, we've leapt onto Leonardo da Vinci instead. I would say that the Large Hadron Collider is a bit like, I feel that we should, it goes back to the future. We go back in time. It's a telescope taking us back in time to propel us forward into the future. And I feel very much that we, with the arts, we can be bringing the arts to science. We could be going backwards in time, going back to the time of the Renaissance and Leonardo, the name of Roger's great publication, where we had that fluid and fluent interplay between the arts and science. That doesn't mean breaking down the silos at all and saying they're similar at all, but it's important. What I would also say is that arts and science are kissing cousins, though. They are related. That's a term which Mario Petrucci, the poet who started off as a physicist, started, talked about. They just express knowledge in different ways and our place in the world. The arts through the senses and the intellect, science through proof and equations. Um, and if the scientists amongst you, again, a very easy equation, because... As I said, I felt CERN was really missing something. As a great cultural force, it's extraordinary, but it was missing the arts. So, and together, arts and science equal culture. And I would argue also arts touch the hearts which science alone can reach, can't reach, that really it is about a way of transmitting science into society um, and moving forward from there. So how do you embed it in CERN, which is an extraordinary organization um, which has been constructed before the, the war? Um, and I just skipped on again. Um, it's an extraordinary place which started as a field, <laughs> field with cows. <laughs> and then we skipped to this, this extraordinary, as I said, one of the eighth wonders of the world, quite exceptional. So as a place, it's a place which basically says the impossible, the field of cows, can become this, can become a terror, an amazing cavern underground. And you would never believe how shambolic it is above ground. It's like being on the set of The Prisoner in the 1950s. It's a higgledy-piggledy of lots of crazy buildings on top. And then you go down under, and the precision of those detectors is absolutely or inspiring, absolutely out of this world. What also makes CERN very fundamentally is the people and the numbers of collaborations. There are 100 different countries, 580 institutions. It's exceptional in that way. 
and artists from all over the world have actually started coming to CERN and have been inspired by it. Um, and it's extraordinary in that way. And I felt very strongly that we should be bringing artists to CERN in a much more formal way. But even without formality, people have been inspired by CERN. So Galaxy Spiders was recently premiered in Switzerland earlier this year. Gilles Jobin, uh, extraordinary piece based on, um, which actually had the sounds of sonification of data from the Atlas detector, uh, which was then remodified and done by Carla Scalati and Christian Vogel. And it was a piece which was actually enacting the cosmos. And also recently, there was this set. You'll probably recognize this image again. It gets everywhere, uh, the Atlas detector. But also, what we've just done is we've hung our first major international piece of art inside CERN. It went up uh, two weeks ago. Uh, it was donated. It was just a present from Anthony Gormley. Um, and it's suspended in the main um, hallway at the moment at CERN. And I've noticed this extraordinary patterning which has happened. Scientists are very focused, and they always walk in straight lines, and they're always kind of, their eyes are always focused to where they're going. They're very directional focused. And we've now got this suspended between two different floors. And I actually now see scientists walking along and then going up and then down. Very unusual. So they have ways of looking, these people who look at the invisible, um, who are very focused when they're in the phenomenological world, they're now, I kind of see this change of them all challenging. And when I was hanging this with the hangers, I had a pool of scientists at the bottom um, basically saying, what's going on? And they said, we really feel we need something like this at CERN. We need to bring the arts at CERN. Um, and I said, oh, well, that's why I'm here. So, so how can this happen? It is absolutely about people, place, and culture. Um, the extraordinary people I have the privilege to work with. Um, the place, which, as I said, everything's, everything which is impossible is thought to be possible. The culture, which actually gives you that opportunity and says, fly, try something, test something. It's also extraordinary. Somebody asked me at um, the airport as I was flying in, what's it like to be the one person there who's looking after the arts amongst 10,500 scientists who are very, very focused? And um, I said, well, it's a challenge. And I quoted one of my fellow scientists at CERN who said to me, Ariane, you're going to find it really fascinating because we're all us scientists, we're chosen for our excellence and our, our exceptionalism. Um, and you will find that we think we can do anything and that we think we are great artists and great composers and we can do great symphonies and we should be doing them now. And you're going to have a tough time um, because nobody's going to understand why you need the arts because we can do it anyway. So here we go. It means that you really have to engage with the place and the culture. So CERN is a bureaucratic uh, culture, so therefore it does need a cultural policy before you even start really bringing the arts in in a formal sense. So I constructed a policy which is called Great Arts for Great Science. Very simple. It's very simple, but it's a way when you're starting from ground zero of building and embedding something in an organization which has existed for over 60 years. And by great... I don't mean, you know, just the Anthony Gormleys of the world. I mean the great innovative emergent artists who are doing extraordinary work, unexpected work, interventions, who won't be afraid of doing interventions across the campus at CERN, really interrupting the flow of people and the flow of ideas, um, people who would take the challenge of data, as um, Roger was talking about it, and kind of turning it into something quite extraordinary. So I constructed also CERN's cultural board because, again, I'm working in a culture where this is understood. So you have to do this. You have to create, replicate the culture you're in. Uh, so we've got astounding people from the arts who are on this cultural board who build in knowledge into the organisation. 
because I want knowledge in the organization at the same level as our director general, so international figures who are at the same level of expertise and knowledge and understanding um, and gravitas who are there. So Beatrix Roof, for example, director of the Kunsthaus Zurich, who was voted as one of the top art power play players in the arts newspaper recently. But I suppose the next thing is excellence and selection, because as I said, the scientists understand selection for themselves, uh, but they don't understand selection for the arts. As I said, my fellow scientists said, you know, we think we can do it, therefore there's no need for selection. So what I've created is something called Collide at CERN, which is an artist residency program. It followed a four-month feasibility study at CERN in 2009, and it really looked at the community and how it works. Um, I was very lucky in the sense that in 2000, there was a significant artist residency at program at CERN, so it's not a new thing. <laughs> um, Ken McMullen and the London Institute did a visual arts residency at CERN. It wasn't uh, formalized or structured, um, but it gave me the basis for starting the conversation with scientists and artists as to what happened on that residency, what worked for them, what didn't work for them, and it gave me a really important building block. And the elements that collide at CERN are really, as I said, the time, the pl time. At CERN at the moment, it really is the time to be there, the most extraordinary time in particle physics. The place, as I said, where you have the two different opposites of the shambolic and the precise underground. The people who are exceptional. Um, you know, I was talking to Henri the other day and he said, oh, you know, the floor beneath you is actually full of holes. You think that's really solid. You're completely wrong. It's full of holes. Don't you realize that matter has holes in it? And the minute you, somebody says that to you as an artist or as a writer, you're transported into a different world and the trapdoors of your imagination come forward. So Collide at CERN is going to be a residency program, which is won by international competition in different art forms. And if you were at the Prisars Electronica last night, uh, we announced the first of them in um, partnership with um, uh, Ars Electronica, which we're extremely excited about, which is, again, part of building in knowledge into this very great science organization by creating cultural partners who have equivalent, extraordinary, exceptional um, vision. Uh, so we're very excited about that. And I'll be talking more about the details of the Collide at CERN uh, residency program at a press call at 2 o'clock, but also tomorrow at Pixel Spaces in the morning. But creative patrons we have for it, Jacques Herzog, Mariko Mori, Andres Gursky, extraordinary artists, they've all been to CERN, and they can all actually pay witness, first-hand witness to the exceptional inspiration it paid for them. And again, that's about building things in. And as I said, Prisars Electronica, the first of the prizes, which is going to be an annual prize every year as to win a funded residency, two months at CERN and a month um, with the Future Lab team, working the Future Lab team, funded again, uh, and producing work which has been inspired by CERN. The other thing I had to do is really make visible what, how CERN has inspired arts and the access points for people, artists, to come to CERN. Because again, it hasn't been open in that sense. Um, and now we're actually, my cultural board are accepting up to two artist proposals a year, which, are uns which can come from anywhere, which we will support. We can't support it with money, but we can support it with a letter of recommendation saying this is extraordinary. And it's a way of joining with the arts community to build up an international portfolio of extraordinary work inspired by CERN. But artists also come to us through public visits. And pub, uh, as a public lab, we're open for visits and extraordinarily uh, willing. And if you come, make yourself known to me. Um, I'd love to see you. Step five in the whole thing about embedding the arts, it's really important. CERN is such an extraordinary community. It has its own shop, its own post office, own travel agency. And the community is very, very tight and strong. And in fact, the Collide at CERN program's been actually 
build on the interactions between the community because that was something which um, didn't work in the last residency in 2000. But it's really important for me personally to actually support CERN grown arts initiatives which have extraordinary international potential. And as somebody who's worked in the cultural field, I can advise that. So for example, Cineglobe, which is a um, short film festival which has been run by enthusiasts from CERN, from the film club, um, we've just re reformulated that. And it's relaunching in March and it's extraordinary. It's got a great quote from Paul Dirac any short filmmakers, I would say, go and look at it immediately. So what do the arts and science have in common? They do have things in common. They have research, discovery, experimentation, application. Um, and there are also things I, I sometimes think we're all scientists in a way because we're born, learn, the way we learn to walk is all about experimentation, learning about gravity through our bodies, and then we become artists in the way we actually then interpret that data through our bodies. So there's that kind of link. But it's so important, as Roger said, to actually celebrate the disconnections as much as the connections. You don't want them to merge. Absolutely, you don't. Um, I think there's great value in artists not understanding the language of science. So finally, knowledge is limited and imagination encircles the world. And as Max Perutz, um, the Austrian-born biologist, said, you know, imagination is at the centre of what it is to be an artist and a scientist. So I would say imagination equals art, science and technology squared, but also innovation is imagination brought down to earth. And where it all begins is with the imagination. Thank you.